In this video, I will show you how to make a good plot on paper. Let's take this example. In this example, we want to plot t squared against L. This means we want t squared to be on the y axis and L to be on the x axis. So, how do we go about plotting this? So, the first step in every graph is to label the axis. So let's start by labeling the x-axis. The x-axis is L and the unit is centimeter. On the y-axis, we have t squared and the unit is second square. So the next step is to label, is to provide the title of the graph. So in this case, the title is period square. This is a graph of period square versus pendulum, pendulum length. So now that we've got the X label done and the Y label at the title, the next challenge is to define the scale of the graph. This aspect is the most difficult aspect of graphing because figuring out the right scale will determine how large your graph will be. In most cases, you're expected to have your graph covering at least half of the space in the, in, in the graph paper. So the question is, how do you come up with a scale that guarantees that half of the, at least half of the space on your graph is covered by your points? So let's approach it this way. We're going to use a, system, a systematic approach in figuring out the scale. So the first thing you want to do is to pick one of the one of the axes. So let's start with the L with the X axis. So the first thing you want to do is to determine the minimum value of L. So the minimum L is 20. The maximum L is 100. So let's take a difference. So the difference between them is 80. So the next thing you want to do is to count the number of large squares on the x-axis. So if you check this out, you'll see that we have, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is the fourth one, this is five, this is six, and this is seven. So now that we've got seven major squares along the x-axis, what you want to do is to divide 80 by 7. So this means you take this 80 and divide by 7, and that will give you 11.4. This 11.4 suggests that our scale should be somewhere around 11.4. But we can't use exactly 11.4 because it is not is not one of the ideal numbers to use for scaling because if you want to get the the, the, the value of the smaller squares, 11.4 will not really help you to get those numbers. So ideally, your scale should come from any of these numbers, numbers like 1 or 0 0.1, or you have 2 or 0 0.2, or you have 5 or 0 0.5, or you have 10, and 20 and 50 and so on and so forth or you could also have something like 0 0.01 and so on and so forth so which means we are going to make a decision as follows which number among this ideal scale is closest to 11.4 but also greater than 11.4 it should be less than 11.4 it has to be greater than 11.4, but also from this ideal scale. So you will see, you will notice that both 10 and 20 are closer to 11.4, but 
but 20 is the one that is greater. So we're going to use 20 as our scale. So now let's label the x-axis with the 20. So in this case, we're going to label the, each of these block as 20, then the next will be 40, then the next will be 60, and you have 80, 100, 120, and you have 140. And this is zero. Now we've we figured out the scale of the x axis. So, so let's move on to the scale of the y axis. So you will do the same thing. You look at the minimum t square, which is 0 0.79, then the maximum t square is 3.95. You take a difference between the minimum and the maximum and that will give you 2.86 so the next thing we are going to do is to count the number of division that is the number of major blocks on the y-axis so if you check this out you see we have one here two three four five six seven eight and nine so that means we're going to divide eight points two point eight six by nine if you do that you're going to get two point eight six divided by nine and that will give us zero point Three. So, are we going to use 0 0.3? The answer is no, because 0 0.3 is not one of the ideal scale. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the closest to 0 0.3. If you check this ideal scale here, you will notice that 0 0.1 is closer to 0 0.3, 0 0.2 is also closer to 0 0.5. But then we are going to pick the highest that is closer to 0 0.3. That is the one that is closer, that is closer to 0 0.3 and also greater than 0 0.3. The answer is 0 0.5. So which means we are going to use a scale of 0 0.5. So here we have 0, then the next is 0 0.5, then followed by 1. Then followed by 1.5, then followed by 2, then followed by 2.5, then the next is 3, then here we have 3.5, then follow then the next is 4, then we have 4.5. So now we are done with the scale. So what's the next thing? The next thing is to identify locate the points. On the graph so this means we're going to say when L is 20 so which is this line T square is 0 0.79 so we're going to look for 0 0.79 so how do you look for 0 0.79 so the first thing you need to know is to figure out the number of division on each axis so if I have a division of let's say I have a division of 10 altogether that means each of these small lines will be 0 0.5 divided by 10 but if i have a division of 20 which is the, the the division we have in this case that means i'm going to divide 0 0.5 by 20. so in this case we have a division of 20 so which means i'm going to 0 0.5 divided by 20. so which means each tiny division here is 0 0.025 so to get 0 0.79 you will trace this up when x is 20 y is 0 0.79 so 0 0.79 is very close to 1 so this is 0 0.5 then halfway is 0 0.75 then 0 0.79 should be very close to this point 
now that we've made all the points on the graph, the next step is to draw the line of best fits. A line of best fits is a straight line that touches or get the, or that touches all the points or very close to all the points. In most cases, your line of best fits won't touch all the points, but it should be as close as possible to all the points. And you are expected to use a ruler to draw your line of best fit. So let's take a look at how the line of best fit can be drawn. So you make sure it's outside it's outside the smallest points, but as but it touches as many points as possible, it's as close as possible to all the points. So this is a sample of line of best fit. So after drawing your line of best fit, the next thing to do is to get the slope. In most experiments, you'll be asked to get the slope. You are not expected to pick two points that you have in your data for your slope. You can just pick any point that is touching the line of best fit as, as, uh, as points to be used for your slope. So just take a look. In this case, I'm going to pick this point. I'm going to take this as my point one, and I'm going to take this as my point two. So then I'm going to connect. I'm going to connect them. It's a broken line. Okay, so this is my change in t square, and this is my change in l. So my change in t square is the difference between this lower, this upper one minus the lower one. So in, in other words, it's simply three point five minus one, which is equal to two point five. In this case, I'm going to locate this down here, which is very close to 20 points. This is about 20. This is 30 here, then mid is 25. So it's a bit above 25. So let's say 26. Then this is very close to 90. This this is, close, let's say, between 90 and and uh, the midpoint here, which is 95, so let's say roughly 92. So we say the change in L is 92 minus 26, and this will give us 66. So what then is your slope? Your slope is equal to the change in t squared divided by change in l, which is equal to 2.5 divided by 66, and that's equal to 0 0.038. So this is how you make a plot of uh, physics experiments, and uh, this is also how you calculate your slope.